Hello everyone, this is Dan from TradeUnity. I want to explain to you in this video how to calculate your trade side in lots from your risk, which we will calculate using pips. So, in order to do this, let's use a tool we made for you. Go to Tools and Resources under the Trade menu item in our platform and download the, uh, trading, uh, uh, the trading journal or just download uh, one of the trading results which you will see there. You can just use it to to practice like I will do right now. So all you need to do is click on the file and you will get this table here and you can just use what we prepared for you here to define your risk. So here please pay attention to the numbers 1, 2, 3 and 4. It's how we help you place the trades. Uh, the first box, number 1, is the only one you should edit. You can edit your capital or your risk per trade. Then the second one will also change when you change these values and also down where the arrow points you will see how the risk per trade changes, the value of it changes each time you change one of these parameters, your capital or your risk per trade. Look, to make it more obvious I will mark it in red to see what I'm talking about. So I'm talking about this value here that says risk per trade and now it's more highlighted with yellow background and red text. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, if you if you change the capital, you will see the values also in the second box changing because it's going to show you suggestions of how much you're able to lose actually if one of your trades goes bad. Okay, now let's press this button on the third box, which will take us to the tool which we will use to calculate our risk. This tool is called Position Size Calculator and it comes from MyFX book, which we also use to show the results of our robot, for example. Here you have several fields which you can enter, for example, the account size, let's just put 1000 so it's easier to calculate. Then you have how much you're willing to risk, I'm gonna put just 1.5% per trade to show you how it works, or if you want you can just swap it with money and then you say how much you want to risk in money, not in percentage, so if you want a fixed value, like $15, then you put there 15 and then you have to put your stop loss in pips. This is your stop size. So for example, if I put 250 pips, uh, you will see that I need to trade 0 0.006 lots. But what are these pips actually? And what do they mean? And how can we calculate them? Because this is one of the big problems of beginner traders. They don't understand how to calculate the risk based on pips. Well, I made this simple table for you, which will help you understand how to calculate your stop size in pips. Pay attention now. And now a bit of background. A pip uh, is short for percentage, but mm, actually it means the smallest number that will change in a price of a pair. So it used to be the last decimal which was changing in a pair. But now there's another convention and actually it can depend on the broker, but the norm is that for pairs, which we call normal, which are non-Japanese yen pairs, the pip is the fourth decimal after the point. So you can see in this table where I marked it with red, which one is the pip. This will help you, um, this will help you calculate your stop size in pips for these pairs. So once again, for non-Japanese yen pairs like Euro USD, Australian dollar USD, um, Euro versus New Zealand dollar, uh, Aust Canadian dollar versus Swiss franc, or any other pair, in fact, that has four or more decimals after the point, the pip is the fourth decimal, which I here marked in red. Now, for Japanese yen pairs, the story is a bit different. Over here, the convention says that the uh, decimal where the pip is marked is the second one after the point. That is because Japanese yen pairs are bigger in value and in total you have also five uh, numbers up until the second decimal and that is called a pip. You can see them here, I marked them in red. So for USD Japanese Yen, Great British Pound Japanese Yen, Euro Japanese Yen or any other pair with Japanese Yen, the pip is at the second decimal after the point. But we at Unity also 
trade a lot of gold. So for gold, I want to show you that the actual pip value is at the last decimal, so it's actually the sixth number. So as I said, this is all a convention. It's what's happening now, how things are calculated, and the best way to remember them as a, as a beginner is to actually learn the rules and learn where the pip values are. Okay, but what if you want to trade something that I haven't mentioned? Well, it's quite simple actually. First of all, I will ask you to Google it and see if you can find the information somewhere how to calculate the pip. And in case you cannot find it, you can always ask us. But first try to find it yourself because it might depend to a specific instrument which only you want to trade. So now let's take an example. Let's uh, calculate the pip size, the, the stop size of a trade. Let's look at the list of trades and choose one. Uh, this one, the Great British Pound versus Canadian Dollar is good. I'm gonna fire up my calculator and I'm going to calculate how many pips is the stop size. So I'm gonna ignore the, um, I'm going to ignore the point and I'm going to stop at the fourth decimal. I will uh, subtract from the entry point of 1.7230 to get to four decimals minus 1.7289 which is my stop size, stop loss. So I will get a difference of 59 pips. 59 pips is the value which I need to fill in the position calculator. Let's switch over to the position calculator and um, over there first you'll need to change your currency pair into the great British pound with Canadian dollars and add your stop loss in pips. Now hit calculate and you have your lot uh, size for this trade. Now this is very important. Okay, so far so good. But what happens if your account size is smaller and the lot size becomes smaller than 0 0.01? 0 0.01 is the minimum most brokers allow you to trade with. So for example, if I were to change the account size to something smaller like $200, you would see that the lot size also decreases to something smaller to 0 0.007 to be more exact. Well, 0 0.007 is smaller than 0 0.01, which means we can't trade with this lot size. So we'll need to increase the risk in order to reach 0 0.1. We're gonna do some trial and error, and it looks like in order to risk the minimum lot size, we will have to risk 2.2%, uh, which is $4.4 in this case, and it's bigger than what we initially set out to risk. If you go back a bit, you will see that we set out to risk $3 and now we're risking 4.4, which is about uh, halfway more than we were set. If we are okay with this risk, if this uh, is according to our trading plan, we can go ahead. Otherwise, we need to uh, either use this on an account with a higher value where uh, the lot size will be uh, enough to place a trade or we can simply skip the trade. Okay, time to practice. Let's place this lot size in a new order. And for that, let's go to an MT4 and create a new order on the currency that we chose, the GBP uh, Canadian dollar pair. Uh, this is my, just my demo account, so it doesn't matter that I play with it like this. In the volume field, you will place your lot size. You'll see that you can place anything you want, but the order will be always rounded to the second decimal because that's what the broker allows. So either if you place 0 0.03 or 0 0.34, uh, 0 0.034, in the end, the volume of the order will always be 0 0.03 lots because the broker does not allow more decimals after the second one. So that's it. Now you, can, now you know how to calculate your risk size. And from now on, all you need is to practice a bit and I do suggest you practice on a demo account first to understand better the relationship between your account size, the volume of your trades, and how much you actually risk in money. I hope this was helpful to you, and I'm waiting for your questions and suggestions on our chat group or on our platform. Thank you so much for your attention.